All right, let me get comfortable here, folks. Green tea. It's hot as hell here in St. Louis. I'll set this down. All right, I'm going to try to take more of a low-key approach this week. I'm feeling kind of kind of loosey-goosey. But you know, you know who it is. It's me, Jeremy, one of your very favorite people with Parkinson's. What shall we discuss on this fine Sunday? Or whatever day it happens to be when you are listening to it. Let's go with fatigue. Fatigue is something I think we can all relate to. And honestly, it was one of the most troubling of my first symptoms. Uh, that's, I hear that a lot, pretty much. To a person, fatigue is really the torpedo that sinks your, your ship as far as your mood and everything else goes. And that was one of the very first things I started to notice. I just, why am I so tired all the time? I feel like my feet are stuck to the floor. I got to pull them off the floor. It takes forever to do anything. My, the, the guys I used to work with were calling me slow-mo because I would, I would drive a forklift and I would turn the wheel real slow because my shoulder was locked up. By the way, my shoulder is feeling better for those of you who are worried about it. This, the dystonia seems to have passed. But back to my point. Fatigue is just one of those things that just, it's like, it just creeps up on you and before you know you're tired of everything. I remember going to work and having plans in the afternoon. Um, I would get up about five, go to work, and get home about three, two or three. And I would have friends waiting for me, and I just literally had no energy left. And I, I mean, I did a very physical job, but the thing was, on days where I didn't have to work physically, I still came home shot, and it didn't matter how long I slept or anything. There was no real pattern other than I just woke up in a malaise every day. Now, I think it's pretty common knowledge, at least on this channel, but just to let you guys know, maybe if you're not aware, Parkinson's isn't just the shaky hands. It's a movement disorder. It makes your movement hard to, to move or jerky or shaky or a lot of different ways it can manifest. But imagine, imagine you have an extra five pounds on each arm and each leg and you're trying to trudge through the day and like, it doesn't start with five pounds. Maybe it starts with like half a pound half a pound so you're, you're kind of just getting worn down slowly but before you know it you're just in full-on exhaustion mode I remember I used to work with some Latin guys and they would always ask me como estas how are you and I would say estoy muy cansado which means I'm very tired and they said tu eres siempre cansado means you're always tired I was like yeah I am always tired but I didn't really think much of it so I have a little visual aid here to kind of put it in perspective kind of the battle that us parkies go through that that the rest of the world really doesn't get. I'm, in, I'm up in the morning, this is before I've taken any medication, and I'm trying to split a bagel. I like having bagels and bagels and eggs and glass of juice or some coffee in the morning. That's kind of my daily routine. Well, this bagel is, is a tough nut to crack, and I'm going to play it, and I'll do some commentary, and then we'll come back and talk about the fatigue factor a little more. All right, let's get this party started, this bagel party. You can see my hand shaking, that's my right hand. Left hand's not so bad. Oh my God, it's painful to watch. Uh, crack it open. Almost. Oh, nope. Flip it over, Jeremy. Try it from this side. Ta-da, got it. Wow, makes you want to take a nap or go back to bed after watching it. I literally could not move my hands. It was like, to, to really describe it in a way that maybe the rest of the world can get, what the rest of you think of as automatic movement. You, you walk automatically. You pick up your coffee cup automatically. You're not thinking about any of these things unless you're maybe afraid you're going to spill something. But imagine having to literally direct your mind and your energy down your arm, down to your fingers, coordinate both hands, and pry that bagel apart. It's hard. It'll wear you out mentally. And that was another troubling thing, and I've talked about it in other places on this channel. Just the mental fatigue. Just coming into a mental fog. You literally just, your brain can't deal with all the input 
and coordinating your muscles. It's really, it was really troubling. So just imagine everything you do is as difficult as cracking that bagel open. You try to get the milk unscrewed, can't do it. Pick up the phone, try to dial the numbers, can't do it. I have a foot cell phone, by the way, because I, I mean, a, a, a little cell phone, like an iPhone, I can't, I can't do the numbers. And uh, turning a car key, turning an ignition key, it's like, it's just like, everything is so freaking difficult. Now, when I take my medicine, you would just say, well, take your medicine and you'll be better. Well, I, there's something which is called dyskinesia, which is uncontrolled body movements. Um, you literally are not in control of your body. Your, your body's moving and twirling and twisting. That's not Parkinson's. That's a side effect of the medication that we take. Now, not everybody gets it. Not everybody gets it as severe as I have it. I'm going to put a link in the, in the description to a video I have talking about my walking problems on this medication. And it's difficult to watch, and it's even more difficult to do. And it, you can see it just wears you out. So so you're either fighting, it's called bradykinesia, bradykinesis. Let me try that again. It's called bradykinesia. There we go, got it. All these complicated words. Makes you move slow. Then you take a pill and suddenly you're like, well, imagine trying to coordinate that body. It's hard to do, especially when you're moving in ways you can't control. So you're either fighting the slow movements and the stiff movements, or you're fighting the uncontrollable movements. So you're literally like your muscles are just exhausted all the time. And I mean, one of the things I definitely noticed early on before my diagnosis was I had to take a nap. Now, people would just say, oh, it's your old man nap. You're getting old. Because at that point, I guess I was in my mid-30s. I'm like, I should not need to take a nap every day. But I literally had to just to get any semblance of rest. Or, But the, but the thing was, when, when your brain is low in dopamine, which is what happens in Parkinson's, your, the dopamine cells in your brain, which produce dopamine to help you move, die off or no longer function. So your brain is literally working overtime for the simplest of tasks. And sleep does not really help. Not I me, mean, not really for me. I mean, it, I mean, it does help me rest to some extent, but it won't really produce any more dopamine if you sleep. So in fact, the longer I sleep, the more stiff I can get. So it's pretty, pretty common for me to get up about five o'clock in the morning and just get around up and start moving because I have to. So that is what a typical day in a Parky's life is like, fighting your body every step of the way. It's frustrating, it's maddening, and I know sometimes people uh, probably wonder what's wrong with that guy. I mean, I'm actually, I've started to shake more, which is annoying, but it does help, I think, with the questions. Because before I shook, people would, I mean, I would, I know people would stare. And it's not, it's not my business whether people think of me. But you do, you do notice. And I think with a tremor now, people go, oh, Parkinson's or MS. Or they, they instantly know it's something else, maybe other than drugs or alcohol or something. So when you see somebody out in public with Parkinson's or you know somebody with Parkinson's, just let that be in the back or the front of your mind. Like this guy or this woman is really struggling to do everything. Sometimes just forming a sentence with your mouth and talking while sitting can be exhausting. And that's, that is hard to describe and it's very frustrating because as you know, I love me some talking. <laughs> Scratch that last part. Maybe I'll edit that part out. All right, that's all I got. Hopefully this was insightful for you. Hopefully you, maybe, hopefully you learned something if you're not a parky, or maybe you are a parky and you're actually going, that makes sense to me. My brain isn't producing enough dopamine, which makes moving harder, which makes me more tired. And then people without Parkinson's, they'll also have a, get a, a better clue. It's a, it's a complicated disease. It's confusing. I don't understand why certain things happen. I don't understand why sometimes sometimes I take my pill, I can get up and walk across the room. Other times I, I literally am like clutching the walls trying to keep myself from falling. That's it. Hope you liked it. By the way, you like this video? Like and subscribe. I'm nearing 1,000 subscribers. That's been kind of a milestone I've been looking forward to. I never thought I'd get there, but pretty damn close. Peace and love. You know where. From the city of St. Louis.